Hi guys and welcome back to another PPTV with myself Bethley Ashby, your social media extraordinaire here at Progressive. Um, I'm here with the wonderful Neville Wright today. Say hi Neville. Hello. Hi everybody. <laughs> So for you watching right now and those tuning in, we do have various live feeds on the go and we do have YouTube filming as well. So if we keep looking away, it's not because we don't love you. We've just got lots going on right now. Um, but Neville, for those who might not know much about yourself or haven't heard of you before, can you give us a little bit of a top line? Uh, I started business in 1974, which was uh, obviously a long time ago. Mm. And... Um, and worked every day since, and uh, started with 37 pence for a, a piece of scrim, a cloth for cleaning windows, so I became a window cleaner one day. So, but the day before, I was a beggar, begging for two pounds in the dole office, and um, that was in the morning, and in the afternoon, when I'd had a confrontation with them, uh, I, I became uh, m my... Uh, my own boss then I had to start working <laughs> <laughs> so um, and then we went on to build a property company and then retail and both at the same time mm -hmm. and we built the uh, largest independent nursery uh, equipment store in in the country mm -hmm. uh, we sold four of those by the way from 1980 to 2011 and we got a world record price of uh, it, uh, 70 million pounds for uh, one shop. Uh, so, so not too bad. Not too bad, and, no. <laughs> uh, we've carried on our journey since then, built 600 houses in another company, what we own. And, um, and so it goes on. It's, it's we, never ending. Yeah, it's, it's, it's never ending. So people who say uh, about retirement... Um, and I ask them what they mean by retirement. They say, doing what I want to do when I want to do it. So I retired at the age of 24 uh, on 1974, doing what I wanted to do. That's brilliant. So there we are. Yeah, I so that's a that. bit about myself. And sorry about the, the colours. <laughs> I'm coordinated by the look of it with Neville's the progressive properties. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It looks like you made a real effort for today. <laughs> I didn't know this was going to happen. So, uh, yeah, coincidence. It, it works perfectly. But um, I do think that's quite a good point, what you mentioned there, of retirement is doing what you love and never having to work again. Yes. I yeah. just think that's brilliant because if you do what you love, you will never work a day again in your life. No. It's just it's what you're passionate about and what you enjoy. Yes. It, it doesn't mean it's not hard hard to do it and uh, you going through all the um, trials of building a business and um, and uh, trying different ways mm. because we never stopped every single day was just a little bit different and uh, we kept the things on that was working and and left the things that didn't work behind mm -hmm. so it's just a, a journey a mm -hmm. progression that uh, you go through yeah. And uh, as I say, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And as long as it works 51% of the time, that, that's, I like that's that. <laughs> you're a success. Yeah. <laughs> I like that because obviously in business, yeah. there is a lot of trial and error that does take place. Like, it it's is. It's never going to run smoothly. Well, we'd, we'd never been in business before. Our parents had never been in business. And uh, I say ours because it was my wife, Marilyn, mm -hmm. and myself, and it still is. 50 odd years later so um it's it's a, a journey that is unexpected so every day is unexpected we never worked for ourselves uh we'd never uh, done any bookkeeping mm -hmm. we'd, we'd never been out and got any customers we'd never employed anybody and we ended up with uh one shop employing 120 full-time full -time staff. Wow. So we had n not a clue about um, their health and safety and all the laws. We had to learn that mm -hmm. as we went along every day. Yeah. And there's people's wants and needs and ambitions. And it's, it's a journey that's fantastic, really, because... Mm. You do think everybody wants the same as you, but they don't. Everybody wants different things. Yeah. And, and that you have to learn. 
did you find that quite difficult? Oh, very difficult. Yeah. yeah. It was there was <laughs> the so steep many, learning curve. It was a very steep learning curve, you know, for thirty odd years, mm. really. And uh, but it was it was good. And once you know something, that you can you can expand on it, and you and you can become the best because that's what you want. You're competing mm. against yourself. A lot of people say um, you're competing against uh, other people, competitors, but really the the only competitor you have is inside you. Mm -hmm. You want to get better. You want to beat what you've done. And, um, and, and that's it. So don't worry about anybody else, what they're doing. Focus you know, it's, on yourself. It's, it's what you're doing that, uh, that counts. Yeah. So if we go all the way back then to when you were 24, yeah. you decided you're your own boss now. How did property come into the equation? Well, um, every day we would, I'd do the window cleaning mm -hmm. and then I've just give you my card for my yes. book and, and the book is called The Answer is Yes, Now What is the Question? <laughs> now, the thing is that title came from the first couple of weeks of being in business because I'd clean somebody's windows and they'd say, while you're up there, can you clean my gutter? Mm -hmm. And if you think say 30 pence for cleaning somebody's house, I could get a pound for cleaning their gutter. So that was more lucrative. And then people would say, can you mend my fence? Can you put a latch on my gate? So everything, because we had no money and because we was desperate and mm -hmm. we needed to buy food, yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a good incentive to say yes. So... Eventually, within a few weeks, people were saying, Neville, can you? And I'll go, yes. And they go, I haven't asked the question yet. I say, I'll do anything you want me to do. And so that's where that come from. And so each day it would progress. And after about three months, I left the window cleaning behind mm -hmm. because I was doing property maintenance. Then we started to employ people on a part-time basis. Yeah. And... Um, and so we was earning money from that, from labour. Mm -hmm. And then we realised we didn't want to lose any time. So if we got a small terrace house that needed doing up, yeah. any time we wasn't working for customers, we could work for ourselves. Any spare materials we had left over, okay. we use it on that. That's how we did it. And that's how we started. And we must have renovated a hundred terraced houses in Peterborough over the, over the years. And, um, well, that, that's the 70s and the 80s. Mm -hmm. And so it was one bit at a time, gradually doing it. Yeah, so it happened quite organically then. It, organically. And we pushed. And that, like, we started in the morning as the sun came up and we stopped when the church bells rang 12 at <laughs> night. You know, and it was, um, that, that was what we did. And that's what you have to do. Well, I say you have to do it, you know. We wanted to do it. Because the passion and drive was there, wasn't it? I so. didn't want to be back on that dole queue, in the dole queue, asking for another £2 mm -hmm. a week to feed my family. You so, had your why, didn't you? Yes. I think that's quite important, the why for people who do start investing or creating their own businesses, because that's what keeps you going when times get tough. Yes, and times do get tough. They do. <laughs> and we had lived uh, in a 10-foot car caravan in the... Um, uh, winter of 73-74 uh, when there's a recession and so that was absolutely great because it was mm -hmm. horrible it was the worst thing that was ever happened to us and um, but we survived mm -hmm. so one of the things was you could always go back to living in a caravan and survive yeah so it didn't make any difference to us um, about money so all the money went back into the business because we knew that uh, that was going to make our life easier mm -hmm. in the long run. And it's the long run that counts because I had uh, somebody today asking me uh, what was a shortcut. They needed a shortcut to, to get into property. They needed a shortcut to um, get to where they wanted to be, which was uh, a millionaire, really. And... There isn't a shortcut. You know, you've got to 
you've got to go up the ladder one step at a time mm -hmm. because if there was a shortcut and you got to the top, what would you do? You, you, you'd probably lose it all and then have to start again. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, if they're not a millionaire in six months or a year, they give it up. And in 10 years' time, the person who said, I could have, I yeah. could have, and then they say, I should have, but I didn't, because they didn't keep on progressing on a daily basis because you do succeed in the long run. Mm -hmm. and, and people don't seem to want to... But in 10 years or 20 years' time, they're still going to be about. Um, so why didn't they just put that extra few percent in yeah. every day instead of giving it up? And um, that's what my book's about. Don't give up. That's what it's saying. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is what's going to hit the fan. Be prepared for it. Don't be surprised when things go wrong, because they will. But you just have to pick yourself up and carry, and carry on. on within 10 minutes, really. Yeah. You know, you can't procrastinate. We have that a lot um, within our progressive community. A lot of people, they do share when things go wrong and how they dealt with it, because people, they do see property through rose-tinted glasses, I think, when they first start and think, oh, it's going to solve everything really quickly, when actually, no, things are going to go wrong, it is going to get hard, and you are going to have to think on your feet and figure out how you're going to get through to the next step. Yes, yeah. So I do think it's really important that things will go wrong, things will struggle, but as long as you surround yourself with the right people, such as yourself did, you'll be fine, you can make through it. Uh, that's right. I, um, I lost £160,000 one day. <laughs> um, uh, w a not a very nice person um, had that. And, uh, and this was a long, long time ago. This, this was um, early 2000s. And, um, and I said, that's it. I've finished. I've had enough. Mm -hmm. And um, I went into my wife's office and I took a few of the managers with me and I said, I've had enough. I, I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm finished. Mm -hmm. I'm going to close the place down and I'm off. And they go, all right, okay, where, where are you going? I, just, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm, I'm finished. And my wife said, do you want a cup of tea? And we all had a cup of tea. And then the managers went off. And uh, I sat there and, and Marilyn said, well, what are you doing, Neville? Did you want another cup of tea or are you going? And I said... Um, well, I've got nothing, nowhere to go. <laughs> I've got nothing. No, I, and I went back. I said, I'm going in the warehouse. I'm going to get on a fork truck. I'm going to do some work. And I was determined because I'd got nowhere to go, really. Mm -hmm. My wife wasn't going anywhere. She said, are you going? <laughs> yeah. I just love it. Do you want another cup okay. of tea? Yeah. Are you off? <laughs> yeah. And so within three months... I'd not only made our normal money, but I'd made that £160,000 back with determination, mm -hmm. with focus, with, you know, that was, that was it. I, and, and that's what happens to you. It does, and it's a lesson that I'm sure you've learned from, and that mistake was never made again. Maybe, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> Look, there's always people about who uh, are unscrupulous. Mm -hmm. There is. And, um, and you think you've got it right. And... It's, it's life, it is. And it's, um, be, as, uh, well, you can't be prepared for it, yeah. but you can understand what's going on. And, um, and the thing is, there's the old Italian saying, the fish stinks from the head down. So if you are the boss, you're responsible for everything that happens in your life, everything that mm -hmm. happens for uh, your business and the people who are there. Uh, you're responsible. And so, therefore, I hadn't done my due diligence properly, had I? Yeah. You know, and if people say, well, it's unforeseen, well, I wasn't good enough. And, and so, therefore, it's my fault. Mm -hmm. The book stops with me. And it's one of those things that you need to kick up the ass, you know, very often. Um, and I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's such a key point, though, as well, is that you're able to re accept responsibility and say, you know what, I'm holding my hands up, this is my fault. Because I think a lot of people in business always want to pass the blame. Oh, it's someone else's. How could I have known that? And so on and so on. But no, at the end of the day, if you own the company, you are responsible. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And it doesn't matter what people do. 
it's it it's not their fault it's you mm -hmm. that that um didn't foresee this but you can't foresee everything no you know and this is what makes the world go round and um and this is why you can write books <laughs> and do talks and stuff like that With so everything. therefore it, anything that happens it's um it's not all that bad even if bad things happen mm. you can recall it and uh, look look at Gerald yeah Gerald Ratner what yes. did, he said to me I, I I can beat you I I lost 500 million in one day <laughs> beat that and go what well, is is He's made his life out of that, talking about it, yeah. which is good. It's turned you know, it to your advantage, exact, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. Silver lining yeah. in anything that happens to you. I still wouldn't want to lose 500 no. million. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to, no. <laughs> but it's good to know that even if something like that does happen, that there is a way to come back from that. There is a way to turn that to your advantage and make that work for you. There is. So right. I think that's really important to always try and find a positive, no matter what the situation is. Yes, it's a job at the time, but... Um, there, there is advantages to it. Mm. Yeah. I always say it's like one of those situations, you know, during the time of something bad happening and you're thinking this is the worst thing ever, but then you look back on it a few weeks later and you're all laughing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like you can't laugh during the situation, but when you look back, it's just one of those things that happen yeah. to you. You learn and carry on. Yeah. Mm. Well, I, I think that's amazing that you got that outlook as well. What would some tips be perhaps for anyone watching if they are going through a rough patch? <laughs> Uh, it's normal. It is you. You're going to have rough patches, and it is normal. So uh, don't give up, because imagine the person who invented Five Up, fantastic mm -hmm. drink. It tasted good. They went to market, and it didn't work. So they give it up, and they, and then somebody took the concept and they thought, I can do it better than you. I'll do Six Up. So, fantastic drink, they went to the market, it didn't work. And they, both of those people threw it in. And then mm. you know what happened to 7up, somebody come along, and there you are. So therefore, success can be just around the corner, just with tweaking something. You get in what you put, no, you get out what you put in, sorry, I'm getting uh, confused there myself. Yes, yes, so, and you, and you can, uh, so these things happen, mm -hmm. experience, expect those to happen and what is the worst thing so people tend to give up and what I was saying before you know what is the worst thing because they give up and then they're in the old position where there was before mm. now you've got to get through it it's like what about all the athletes mm. you know the runners the high jump whatever they do if they give up there wouldn't be any Olympic games, would no. they? You know, here we go. Oh no, I'm not doing that. That's too hard. Not feeling what, it today. You know, what about uh, boxing and, um, uh, and what about Tiger Woods today mm, yes. or yesterday? It Amazing. Was. Yeah. So, so it's you know you find a passion and you become the best. Mm -hmm. And if you trip up, then you get up and you and you carry on. And you wouldn't have any athletes. Uh, if that wasn't the case. I guess it separates the successful from the unsuccessful. It's, it's looking at those people and it's saying, well, just because I'm in property or whatever, I'm the same as one of these other people. Mm -hmm. I'm the same as an athlete. You know, I've got to... You've got to keep going. And if you're in it, you've got to be in it to win it. Mm -hmm. And it's no good saying, I could have. I could have, I could have, no, you couldn't. You've got to be there and you've got to do it every single day. You've got to concentrate, you've got to focus, you've got to be determined. And you've got to take the bad with the good you know, and turn it into an advantage. I think that's excellent advice. <laughs> I, I, I think that's brilliant when, for a bit of Monday motivation for everyone as well. I'll tell you, I'll tell you something now. I just remembered a uh, story in the 90s. I had um, I got a very very bad back, mm. and I couldn't walk very well. And uh, I'd be like, if I was walking, I'd be twenty paces behind Marilyn, and she would walk slow, and I'd even walk slower. And uh, I took everything that was going to um, to ease the pain. And one day, 
I don't know what I'd taken, uh, but um, I rang up a company and I ordered uh, several lorry loads of ex-army beds. Okay. Why? I don't really... I thought, because we had a children's shop, I thought I could sell them for children. Anyway, these ex-army beds, they came. In fact, a guy brought me a sample and uh, took it out of his car and I laid on it um, in the uh, car park of where our shop was in Warrington and I ordered lorry loads of them and there was there was like from 1939 and there was real army stuff and it was they were rubbish there was there wasn't children's beds at all and everybody said to me what on earth have you done I go what's wrong with you know it's like I could see something that other people couldn't see Mm -hmm. what it was I don't know we couldn't sell them no way I decided that Christmas I would give them away spend 50 pounds and you get a bed and a mattress worth 50 pound free we had people we had bus loads of people coming to us just to get their their free bed and some people would get to the back door they was really pleased with their purchases and they'd look at the bed and they'd say, well, I'm not having that crap in my house. <laughs> and, and they'd go, they were very happy with what they'd bought. Yeah. But they said, no, you can keep them. <laughs> <laughs> but we'd, we was doing like £100,000 a day in turnover um, in the early 90s um, with that promotion. That's it was. amazing. It, it's all about it was, your marketing. <laughs> and some people go, could I have two, please? Okay, you can have ten if you want. Take as many as you can carry. <laughs> yeah, so you turn these things into an advantage. So there, I, there we are. I think that's a brilliant story. Um, so going on then from the bad that can happen in business, how about the scaling up then? Yeah. So obviously you started... Um, with the window cleaning and then you went into property managing, management, sorry. And then how did you scale up from there? How did it get to the level where you are now? Right. So it was, uh, as I say, a little bit at a time. And then we got a loan and then we turned over the properties very quickly. Mm-hmm. Six weeks to turn over each property. And so it was more or less um, uh, buy three, get one free. Because that's the way it was in those days. Yeah. But if you if you bought every fourth one was basically total profit. It was so we did it so many times. Mm. We did so it was about twelve years before we could start having our own property uh, to keep. But for that first twelve years, we was. Uh, doing maintenance, buying, selling, renovating, yeah. and, it, and it gradually grew. Mm-hmm. It didn't seem like it until you kind of looked back yeah. and see that you was accumulating the properties. And, and then after, um, I think it was 12 years that we, we kept our first six shops that we built. And I did a deal with the builder. Um, I'd got six plots or six uh, shops to Mm. build and there was two plots of land for houses and the builder took the two plots and built the six shops so it was like subsidy it was like a JV partnership it was yeah and we've since and that uh, cost me 72,000 to build those that was 25 years ago I think and we've had 600,000 pound profit out of those so the 72,000 has turned into something like 600,000 pound and I've had 600,000 pound in in rent that's fantastic so all all from that so that's that's how we did it and it got bigger and bigger and Mm. bigger and we've in the last couple of years we've done about 16 million pounds worth of industrial new industrial Mm -hmm. but we've got uh and, uh, and you have to you know, buy and sell, do your deals. And um, we've got 140 tenants now on a commercial property. So it just gradually builds up. How did you find the transition of going from residential to commercial? Uh, 
Was there lots well, to I learn all over again? Well, I made a big mistake because we'd had this, uh, we had 50 residential properties. Mm-hmm. Uh, you would make them into HMOs now, you would. Yes. But uh, in those days, the 90s, you you just had a four-bedroom house and you rented it out. Yeah. Now you'd have... HMO, service people. accommodation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there was a, a bit of a recession. Uh, I uh, I paid... I sold them for about a million pounds. I think I paid about a million pounds for mm. them. And then I gradually built, built up this portfolio of 50 houses. And... Uh, and then I went into industrial, and in in about two years, those properties went up in value uh, to something like three million pounds, and the industrial came down. <laughs> <laughs> but they are that's yeah, the, that's, that's the, the way, way it is. Goes. That's the way it is. But you just do deals. I yeah. mean, um, we've just done a deal last week. Put it on the market. I didn't I didn't actually put it on the market, but somebody made three phone calls for us, uh, an agent did, mm. and, um, and and sold this um, property, and that was uh, five and a half million pounds. And, um, and we'd bought that property twice, bought it and sold it, and we, the, we got four million pounds rent off it while we'd got it, and we made, I think it was two million pounds, so we made six million pounds out of, out of that property. And um, but they're the kind of deals that we can do now. Whereas mm-hmm. before, you know, it was you have to do a deal where you're making just yeah. a few hundred, and um, you've got to. Well, I don't know any other way. You know, start start small and um, focus mm-hmm. on each day, and keep reinvesting the money, and yeah. don't be afraid to borrow, because. People look at borrowing as as debt, but it is if you borrow on your credit card and you go on a holiday, that's debt, (laughs) or you buy a car and that's debt. But um, if you borrow money and you put it into property and you turn it over or tools or equipment Mm -hmm. or whatever, uh, or a shop and stock, that's investment. So there's people get mixed up with being in too much debt. Well, debt is personal, Things that will go down in value mm-hmm. and you don't need, and investment is is something that's going to go up in value, and you can work it and make money out of it. So, uh, but so people get fixated on I'm not having debt. Well, what about investment? Yeah, and that's um, that's where a lot of people stop, and they don't go any further. Mm. They, they 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 can't get it in their mind. I think Rob explained it quite well is that people's mindset around money is where they struggle most because they feel like they can't borrow the money because it is debt. But there is a difference between good debt and bad debt. Like you said, if it's for your own personal use, that's not going to that's not going to go up in value. That's just a memory which then can't take you any further, unfortunately. I um, had uh, £250,000, which um, we, we took out of the business at one time. I then uh, remortgaged my house for 750000 so I'd got a million. Mm-hmm. So I took the million um, and I put it onto this property and the bank loaned me two million. So within 18 months, um, I sold that property at a one and a half million uh, extra and I'd had 200000 pounds worth of rent so on that quarter of a million pound I made 1.7 million in 18 months and that was paying as well paying the interest Mm -hmm. on my mortgage and on the two million so it was I, I didn't think I would make that amount of money when I first bought it because it was going to be in the long run but I had an offer for it which um which I took. I think that's amazing, especially when you say the numbers out loud. So to someone, they could have been worried about, oh, no, I can't take the two million from the bank. That's so much debt, the interest. But like you said, you've done it. And the amount that you've made on that property as a result, you would have been silly not to have taken the money. 
Yes. So I think people, it's a big struggle of trying to change their mindset of how they view money and view debt, especially in the property world and, and investments. I do think a lot of people go into this business thinking they're going to make a lot of money mm -hmm. and they want to start at that kind of level, whereas they're not looking at, they've got to start at a lower level. Mm -hmm. They have to, one, get their confidence, to prove that they can do it, to prove uh, to the bank, they can take a set yes. of figures to the bank and show them, and it takes time. Well, and it's better as well to make the mistakes on the lower end of the scale than obviously the big deals. <laughs> make your mistakes small <laughs> rather than going all I'm, the way up. <laughs> I've made it both Was ends. <laughs> yeah. Which one hurt less? <laughs> um, uh, well, I think it's, it's horses, the courses you, you get over it, whatever, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, I lost 500,000 uh, one day mm -hmm. on shares. And um, I think I should have put that into property. So I withdrew it from property and put it into shares because somebody said it was, it was, a, good, it was a good buy. But the market went the opposite way. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what happens. But you get over it, you do. Yeah. And uh, you've just got to look at things in a different way and, and don't let it hurt you. If you've lived in the 10-foot caravan and now you're living in the house, money is, is just a product. Mm -hmm. It's a byproduct of what you've done. Sometimes you lose it, sometimes you win it. But um, if it doesn't affect you personally, if you're only living on 10% of what you earn, then it's not going to affect you. And it's a, it's a product, you know, that um, you use, mm -hmm. it is. I think that, again, brilliant advice, I think, for everyone watching and for those on um, YouTube as well. Um, so what, what are your thoughts then to do with Brexit? Obviously, there's a lot of uncertainty and everyone's wondering what's going to happen. Obviously, no one knows what's going to happen on the property market. What are your thoughts on it? Well, I don't care because... Um, when I say I don't care, I have got no control over it. Yeah. So it doesn't, it's not going to make any difference to me. I've had a saying for years, I take my look as it comes and I fit myself to it. Okay. Right. So I can't control that. So I don't really talk about it. I've got no interest in mm -hmm. it. Um, and obviously everybody's got their opinion about it. But what can I do? Yeah. Right. So therefore... I think the local council have got 360 families in bed and breakfast. Uh, they want um, they they want a hundred flats building. They want you know to house these people. Mm -hmm. That's where I am. Yeah. Not I'm I'm on the ground floor. So people will still want shelter. They will still want food. Mm -hmm. They'll still want normal things. They still want clothes and everything. Yeah. Life goes Brexit, on, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's and if the lorries queue up at the port, we would just have to get over it and do some. You know, they have to do some better. I can't. I can't do anything about it. Um, and I'll. And we might sit here in a six months' time, and I'll go. Oh, should have. <laughs> <laughs> should have. Could have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I don't know. No, I, that's I, I think that's one of my favourite responses, actually, that someone's given, because you've not tried to guess what's going to happen or anything like that. It's I'm not like, going to waste my time on no, it. No, you're focusing on what you can do now, what the situations are now, and like you said, adapting to what comes. There's a lot of our tenants. I, I do think that uh, there could be um, uh, problems and people could go down, they could go bust, and there could be a recession mm -hmm. because... There's so many of our tenants have gone from like having a million pounds worth of uh, um, stock to five million pounds worth of stock, mm. thinking that this there's going to be a, a problem. Yeah. At the the problem is now they've got all this stock and nothing's happened. Yeah. So how are they going to pay for it? Who are they going to sell it to? Uh, are they going to be getting rid of it? And then if they stop ordering 
what's the manufacturers going to do? Because mm -hmm. if if they've got like four times as much stock in as they need, that means they're not going to order. It's like a domino effect, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. I think it's very so, interesting. And then I suppose some of our tenants will go bust, won't pay the rent, mm -hmm. will have a few vacant places, and then we'll cross that bridge as when it, comes, it happens. Yeah. No, I, I really appreciate your outlook on it and just actually focusing on now and not the what ifs because Brexit does keep getting pushed back. So it's like... Things that people worry about very often don't happen. You, you can spend the whole night not sleeping mm -hmm. because you're worrying about a conversation you're going to have tomorrow and you go in and the person's not there. They've, they've yeah. gone, they've gone. You know, you've got to have this dreadful conversation about them leaving or whatever, and they've give their notice in. They go, you know, what <laughs> did I spend the night worrying about? You and know, you can or, use that time to your advantage, yeah. can't you? You could obviously yeah. sleep so you're ready for the next yeah. day or, or actually could, use it and make changes in your business or invest it more into your business. Yeah. Or you, your wife has said, we're going to go and visit the mother-in-law at the weekend <laughs> and you're the coming. <laughs> And you're coming and say, no, oh, no, yeah, what kind of excuse can you find to get, but, and then the mother-in-law rings and said, they've got a cold. I'd need, I could have had a, I could have had my sleep. I like that analogy. Yeah. I do like that. No, I think you've given so many excellent um, snippets of advice today. And I think especially don't worry about Okay. what's going to happen, adapt to it as it comes and start in small and then grow it. And I think that's a very key bit of advice that a lot of people need to learn because they do see the big numbers and they do see the results like people like yourself have, but they just see the end result. They've not actually researched everything that's happened in between to get you there. And they just want to skip all that and find a quick fix. Yeah, you're not going to. No. And I think that's really key advice. And if there. you can find one, can you yeah. let me know? <laughs> <laughs> We'd all love to know. <laughs> Yeah. But that's brilliant. Thank you so much for coming in today. Absolutely. I think it's been an absolute pleasure. And I'm sure um, not only those watching, but myself included, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you very much. That's brilliant. <laughs> um, guys, if you do have any more questions um, for myself or for Neville, feel free to pop them in the Facebook comments below or on YouTube if you're joining us there. Um, but yeah, until next time, that's us. So goodbye, everyone. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>